Hey guys, Steve Miller. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Kaga. That's right, we got our first Tier 7 premium carry in the game. Japanese in the Bureau. We got Iona. What the heck is that? That's a Arpeggio Steel Commander. I don't know that much about the build. I don't spend that much time thinking about carriers, but I think it uh, reduces the reload time of the planes, essentially. Islands of Ice. Check it out. New map here. Domination mode game. No destroyers in this particular match. So usually with the carriers, if you see me ever play these things, what I'm going to advocate doing, what I'm going to usually try and do myself is uh, fly around, see if we can spot the destroyers for our team, and then we just want to constantly harass those destroyers, keep them spotted, and maybe drop some bombs on them, but hopefully get our teammates to become interested in shooting at them. This game, though, no destroyers, so we're going to have a different approach, okay? And basically what we're going to do here, we'll do a kind of a shot up the gut. And I want to spot as many of these uh, ships on the enemy team as possible for our team. Give them the intelligence that they need to make their own decisions as to where to deploy and what targets to shoot at. That's the opening play here. What is the Kaga? Well, I'll tell you this, guys. You know, I got charts that I keep on all my ships. Carriers, I don't keep that much of uh, detailed stats, right? We just track the stats of the planes and I don't update them that often. But... When I was plugging this Kaga, I'm like, holy smokes, 47 second reload time on the planes, regeneration time, restoration time, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I was comparing it to the other tier 7, 65, you know, most of them were minute plus. And I'm like, holy god, this thing is a beast. Okay, but before I decided to record this video, I went back and checked the Shokaku, because I want to be able to compare it directly to the tier 7 tech tree carrier if need be. And I'm like, wait a second. Shikaku used to have a high uh, restoration time on its planes, but now it's down to 45 seconds on the torpedo bombers and the same 47 seconds as the Kaga has on the uh, HE bombers. So I'm like, okay, that's odd. Went through all the carriers at Tier 7. They all had them dramatically. We're talking about a 33% reduction on the restoration time. I didn't remember seeing anything on the patch notes. Did you guys? I think the carriers got a massive buff. I didn't even know about them. Okay, maybe I missed something. Those of you guys that have been playing carriers, maybe this has been going on for a while. I just wasn't paying attention. Let us know in the comments, but I think we got a stealth buff to the carriers. That's my uh, feeling here. Let me know what's going on, those of you in the know. Why are we constantly uh, reloading these planes? Well, here's the scoop with this thing, okay? Shukaku, uh, squad size, eight planes. Kaga, squad size, eight planes. But here, the attack unit is four, so half the planes will get used per attack anyways. And I'm, these planes are going back to the ship. They're reloading. Keep an eye on this. Basically, I'm uh, doing a quick scout run or I'm doing one quick launch. And then, uh, of course, we're going to try and intercept these and launch uh, planes. This is a huge part of carrier play. Uh, countering the enemies. See if we can see uh, any of those things get shot down. But that's why I'm cycling these planes by, you know, that quickly. Because we're doing one attack. We're letting them go forward. And those planes, they take a little bit of time to turn around the air. They continue to spot that area. Meanwhile, I can get a new set of planes out there very quickly. I don't know if this is a good tactic or not, but <laughs> that's how we're playing this game. I want to explain it to you anyways. Um, but that's kind of my thinking, okay? So we got more consistent spotting, and that's going to be valuable in these low destroyer count games where basically we are the eyes and the ears, okay? And it's unfortunate, you know, why Why are we over here, okay? Well, we, we did our quick loop, and we said, okay, uh, where are all these uh, ships on the enemy team going? They're all going over towards A. You can see them on the map there. The majority of them were over there. And we found that there's only two ships over here. Now, we didn't have a huge numerical advantage over here. We had two, maybe three ships that could shoot at them. But I think, I'm thinking to myself as kind of the game manager role, which is what you kind of be as the carrier once the destroyers are off the board. First your counter destroyer, then you're kind of game manager. You want to keep an eye on the situation and see what needs to be done. Well, I'm saying to myself, okay, well, we got these two ships over here. If I add my firepower and I add the eyes and ears, we can clean up this side. You can see we already captured C. And if we can get these ships off the board quickly now, well, that'll allow us to push up into C, crossfire into B if anyone goes over there, and then gain map control. Okay, so I could be going to the other side of the map trying to fly into these groups of five, six, seven ships in the black hole. They're all going to shoot me down. All their AA will be smoking me at once. Not effective. I'm not going to be getting any damage. But over here, we're going to try and press the overload. Anytime you got an overload on your team or the opportunity to create one, you want to put the foot on the gas. That's when you have the advantage. Get those 
numerical mismatches where you have the more you have more ships in the area shooting at the fewer ships on the enemy team wipe them out and then move in press for the crossfire so that's what we're trying to do for the air and that's why i really you know i find carrier play on a good team like we're going to have here and we're going to have uh at least four guys on the team over 2,000, which is usually a good indicator of a good and solid team. If you're in a carrier on a good team, then I think it's you have control over that game. When you don't have control over the game and the carrier, and when it gets frustrating for me, is when you're on a team where everyone's either off into Timbuktu, they're in outer space, they can't hit anything, or they're not shooting the destroyers you're spotting or whatever, you know. They're not, they're not allowing you to have any sort of control whatsoever that's when you feel impotent and that's when i'm like all right the carrier i just you, i can't influence the game enough i'm done with this okay but games like this where the team is responding to what we're doing then i feel like okay that the carrier is actually pretty powerful in this situation so you know that's kind of the idea there and you can see we wiped out c captured it sure they got a but more or less uh uncontested we've killed four ships they've only killed one right so now we're going to try and press into B here. And we'll try and do our best to spot these guys and do a little bit of damage while we're at it. So Shukaku versus Kaga, what's the deal here? Again, the bigger uh, attack sizes is the key noticeable difference. But watch these HE bomb runs. Look how close you get down here. And this thing is real tough to miss. Okay, especially if you can catch them coming right at you, which is what you want to be doing with the HE bombers. Look at this. Just line them up and shoot them right at the stupid structure, superstructure and boom. Get a fire there, get some raw damage. And compared to the Shikaku, yes, we're going to be doing less damage on the Torps and the HE bombs individually. Okay, that's kind of the balancing factor. 5% uh, lower fire starting chance on the HE bombs. So, I mean, the Shikaku on paper does more damage per attack. But, again, we got double the strike size. And you might be saying, well, it's, it's more advantageous. We want to be launching two planes per strike. You can keep going after the same target over and over again. But the AA will shoot down those planes. So they're going to get wiped out. You're not going to get those follow-up attacks. So having this huge squad for, you know, the next closest is Parseval at three attack size at the tier at least. So using half the squad to bomb there, uh, we get these. Watch these torpedo launches. We're going to be launching four torps at a side. And even if they try and angle in towards the torps, which you may be notice some of these ships trying to do, perhaps this guy does here, it's still very hard to dodge because you get a nice wide torpedo spread it's like a uh, destroyer set of torps rather than like a pair of torps coming in there uh, so it's very hard to counter those very hard to dodge the he so very reliable in terms of doing the damage okay so even though on paper it looks like you're doing a little bit less damage uh, you're actually getting more hits than you normally would be doing so uh, i like it from there other advantage over here better detection in the air uh, three kilometers on the uh, Chicago or the rather the HE bombs and just a half kilometer better on the torpedo bombers but that's always better okay the less time the enemy has to notice okay there's the squad coming my way I better start angling or responding to them or trying to group up with the team however they want to counter you the less time they have to do it and likewise with the enemy squadrons okay if you've been you know we haven't shot down a lot of planes this particular game but I have been sailing around or flying around trying to uh, drop the planes where I think that the enemy carrier is trying to do. And he also did a pretty good job opening, at least. He kind of uh, scouted our team, then flew backwards rather than just diving into him. So I, th I think we're going against a relatively uh, good carrier player, if not a great carrier player. I don't know. I wasn't paying that close attention to him. But once again, check this out. Look at him. We're like 10 feet above the thing there, and boom. Can't miss. <laughs> so it is, you know, it's as far as carriers go, and again, I'm not like a huge carrier uh, head or anything, but... I think this is actually one of the more fun ones to play. And I've, uh, I've had a few good games in that. I've had a few games where I'm like, all right, let's get back to the surface ships. We're not we're not getting anything done here, you know. Uh, but, no, no, I, I do like the Kaga. Okay, I still think Parsifal's probably the strongest at the tier just because those AP bombs, if you're connected with them, can be solid. Lexington, yeah, sure. But I, I think compared to the Shikaku... At least the last time I played it. The Kaga just seems a little bit more reliable. Okay. So I, I enjoy playing this one. Um, I think it'll be a fine Bureau project. If you don't want to dive right into the Bureau, of course, always remember to just briefly start your Bureau projects. Turn them on for 5-10 seconds. Uh, just get a few points in them. Now the, the ship projects don't tend to go away ever. I don't think that's ever happened yet. But the, 
the shorter duration projects, of course you want to do that, but just go ahead and get in the habit. You never know if these projects will uh, leave after a while. So here the Alaska, here's an interesting attack here, right? He's going right to left here, but you can see him angling away. And we anticipate this, and look at this, we aim to the right of the ship. And this is kind of something you can get in the habit of doing, because the players on the surface, when they start to uh, get experience playing against these carriers, they're like, okay, I'm going to do a hard turn here, because of course he's going to be aiming on the indicator, like all the other uh, carrier players do. And look at that, we got him on the hard turn. He turned basically the opposite direction we anticipated that and hit him. Okay, so this isn't like a mind-blowing carrier game here, but we did a lot of the little nitty-gritties. That's why I want to show this. We scouted early. We didn't, like, go straight in for an attack. We kind of did a lap around the whole map trying to spot most, if not all, the enemy team. We identified, okay, which side's the weakest. Let's press that, see if we can gain an advantage. Uh, we were, you know, continuing to try and counter the enemy planes with our own fighter plane drops. And then we've been trying to... Well, okay, once we got kind of later in the game, then we try to get rid of these battleships. Uh, number one, they're easier for us to hit. Number two, they're less of a threat generally in terms of AA. And, you know, anytime we can help get a gun off the board, of course, that's going to help, especially late in the game. Uh, so I, I thought it was just a kind of a well-played carrier game overall. It's not going to change your mind, or it's not going to change your life or anything. It's not going to blow your mind. But we will wind up getting over uh, 2K in this. So I... I haven't turned on this project yet. Of course, we're going to finish off Montana, Minotaur, and then we'll turn this one on. But, uh, you know, once we get the Kaga down the line, which will be two, three months, whatever it'll be, uh, we'll take it out once in a while. You know, it's fine. I'm not, again, I don't play carrier all the time, but from time to time we'll play a game in it. And the Kaga will be a nice premium option to maybe get a little bit more production in terms of credit. So that's going to do it for that one, guys. Hope you do enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. Lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, link below. Love to hear from you. We'll see you all in our videos.